This is Jason Gorey, Lee Campus Pastor at New Horizon Rankin. Take a moment, watch this word that God delivered in our sanctuary. We're going to talk about a little lighter topic. We, we, ended, we ended, the last time I, I spoke, we were talking about husbands, agape, and your wife. Bishop jumped in last week, and I also did uh, last week, talked about uh, wives uh, and submitting to your own husband. And so, you know, I know that's a, uh, we try to make that an ugly word, but, but we're going to talk about that a little bit since I didn't get a chance to share it with you. I'm going to give you a couple of just a quick points on that, and then we're going to jump into what we're talking about today about uh, the relationship between parents and children. Amen? Now, now, if you pray, we're going we're gonna to get through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk real briefly about this. Um, and this message that, that, we're, that we've been dealing with, this is a message for everybody. I know, we, I know at first we were talking about husbands and wives, and, and so you, would, you may have thought that if I'm not a husband, if I'm not currently a husband, if I'm not currently a wife, this message isn't for me. But this message is for those that even look to wifehood, because the Bible talks about he that findeth a wife, and what you find out is that, that you a wife way before you walk down the aisle. There's a spirit of wifehood that you must, must walk in. A husband, you're a husband before you say, I do. Mm, don't worry about it. We'll get there. And then, and, and, and then even, with, and even if you don't have any kids, even as we talk through this message today, you know, you, 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 I, I, look, I look at these messages as umbrellas. And you got to have your umbrella so then when life begins to rain, you cannot look for your umbrella. Or it's too, if you don't have an umbrella when it starts raining, it's too late. So this message or these messages and, 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 and these uh, um, biblical principles that we're laying out, this is for everybody, those that are already uh, in the midst of it raining, <laughs> meaning that we're already married or we already have kids, or those of us that don't, and we look for it one day. And so you need to go on and get your umbrella right now so you'll know what you're doing. You'll know what you're signing up for. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this word. Thank you for this time. Thank you for what you're doing. I am not able to give this word the way you gave it to me, God, so therefore I ask you to speak through me as I sit down. You rise up. Give you glory, honor, and praise. Open up our hearts to receive it and do it. In your name we pray. Amen. So, we, so I want to just jump into this real briefly about, about uh, the wives. And, we, and so we're, we're in Colossians, I think it's Colossians 3 and 18, Colossians 3 and 18, that's uh, in the, in the um, New Testament, it's in the seas. If you're over in Exodus, you're a long way from where we're trying to get to. Colossians 3, 18. And like I said, if you're, if, you, if, if you're a wife or you're uh, a, a, a woman and, and, you, and your husband is uh, there, your significant other, someone you're seriously dating is dead, go on and pull him in here because he needs to hear what we're about to say and vice versa. Then we're going to line the children up here in about 15 minutes and we're going to talk to them too. But I want to read, just, I'm gonna read uh, these three verses, uh, three Colossians 3 and 18 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Number 19 says, And husbands, love your wife and be not bitter against them. And lastly, verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things. Lord, I wish my children were here to hear this. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Amen. Now, I want to, and I want to jump back to Genesis chapter 2 because I want to touch on this wife thing. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 says, you don't have to put it up. I'm just going to read it, one verse. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. I'll make him a helper or a help meet is what we talk about all the time. A paracletus. I'll jump into that in a little while. So let me, let me just give you my thoughts on uh, some of the main thoughts that I thought about as, we, as God spoke to me about this wives submit to your uh, own husband. You have to, you know, submission is such, we, 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 we look at it as an ugly word because it, it hadn't been taught correctly. In the majority of the church, it hadn't been taught correctly. We, we see submitting as uh, obe obeying and training. 
The Bible never says, oh, this I'm going to get in trouble because y'all going to start rewriting your vows. We, all you women, y'all going to want to go renew y'all vows tomorrow because the Bible never said wives obey. Now, you, now, they might, they might, now, we, now as men, we slid it in the vows. <laughs> Trust, honor, respect, and obey. But that's not what God called the woman to do. God did not call a woman to obey. God did not call the husband to train up his wife. You train up children. You train dogs. Mm. Golly. I felt something hit right then. He says you don't train your wife because she is a part of you. You don't, she don't, oh, and you don't, you don't teach her how to obey that's not what this is. Submission and obeying are two completely different things. Well, what is it? I'm glad you asked. Understanding what submission is is one of the important things that we need to understand as we go into this relationship and as you look into the relationship of husband and wife. Understanding the, uh, what submit means. Submit. Mit. M-I-T. It means to, to sin. To sin. If you're taking notes, mit, M-I-T means to sin. So like when you're paying bills, when you open up the bills, it says remit payment to. Re meaning again, mit meaning. So it's again, send this payment where you sent it last month. Right? I know, right? So, so mit means to sin. So follow me, because I know I got to walk this all the way down, because I know, I know I'm going to get challenged on this. So I done did a lot of work on this now. And sub means under. A sub, S-U-B, under. So a submarine, a boat that's under the water. Sub, underwater. Amen? So, so, so that doesn't make sense, right? Submit, under sin. Under sin. So what is that? The verb submit means to get under the sand. The S-E-N-D. Get under the sand. Who sinned? Get under your husband's sin. What does he sin to do? God says, I gave him an assignment. Okay, let's go a little deeper. Genesis chapter 2, 18 says, I'll make this, I'll make this man to help me. God gave Adam several things before Adam was qualified to have a wife. God gave Adam several things before he was qualified to have a wife. First of all, God set Adam in Eden. Eden means God's presence. <laughs> That's why archaeologists can't find Eden today, because Eden is an address. It's an atmosphere. It's an environment. It's, a, it's, 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 it's the presence of God. God set Adam in his presence. God fellowship with Adam, gave him a word. God gave him an assignment. He said, look, I want you to name this and do this and go do this and go. To, and then he gave him work. And after he gave, put him in his presence, fellowship with him, gave him an assignment and gave him work. He says, this is not good for... <laughs> He said, it's not good for that man right there. Not just, Adam. no, it's not good for that man. What man? The man who's in my presence, the man who has my word, the man who has the assignment, and the man that's working. It's not good for that man to be alone. So if your man, if you, <laughs> if you are dating a man, if you are interested in a man and he don't have the presence, and he don't have the fellowship, the word, and he don't have the assignment, and he don't have the work. It is good for that man. It is good for that man. Oh, come on. Teach, Holy Ghost. Teach, teach, teach. Why? Because based on his word, his work, and his assignment, if I marry this man, I have to get under that sin. 
So I need to know what it is. It's not about the biceps. It's not about the triceps. It's not about all this other stuff that he may have. His, it, I need to understand what the sin is. I need to understand what are you doing. I need to understand what I am getting under because I'm going to have to get under this. But uh, Look, before you get on me, I'm going to have to understand what I'm going to get under on I know it's. I know. I know. I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. So before I say I do, I need to understand what it is you do. Because if I don't, and I marry somebody, I may marry a pharaoh. I may marry someone whose mission is to drown in the Red Sea. And now I'm submitting to don't marry someone whose mission is to drown. <laughs> see, what you got to understand, God, it, 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 and see, a lot of people, I used to want to represent, if I was a lawyer, I wanted to represent Pharaoh because I'm like, God, you just set him out there and you set him up to drown. But God says, no, all I did was shine the light. And as I shine the light, his heart hardened. The same light that melts butter hardens clay. So God says, I shine the light on it to reveal who he is. And as, as, he, as I reveal who he is, his heart hardens. He acts a fool and takes himself out there against what I was trying to do, and he drowns. Don't marry a man whose mission is to drown because you will drown with him. You, the horses, the chariots, everything tied to them will drown in the drown, not in the Red Sea, will drown in debt, drown in ego, drown in violence, drown in anger, drown in envy, drown, just drowning and drowning and drowning. You will marry a fool because he looked good. And then when you understand what the mission is, it's too late. You have to know what the mission is before you line yourself up in submission. Okay. So the wife, she understood because it was laid out in Genesis. This is what he's supposed to do. My presence, my word, the assignment, and the work. The assignment is where we're going, and the work is what we're doing day by day. And all my work should lead up to my assignment. I hope you caught that. So there's a difference between the work and the assignment. So now, I'm, I'm about to leave this alone because I feel, I feel the men on Facebook logging off. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. We have to understand. Now, the Bible calls you to submit, women. But you have to understand and have to make it your personal, personal business to know what it is you're getting under. And then we start talking about alignment. Now we start to align ourselves on this one mission. You got a part. I got a part. Your part is leading to my part and my part is leading to what God called us to do as a unit. If your man business, he can do it himself, he missing something. Your mission in life should be bigger than you. Your mission in life should be something that you got to have. Look, we talk about a help me, and we talk about what that means, and we talk about the Bible saying that she is the weaker vessel, and we use that word wrong because we think about that word as, as in strength. But by, the Bible didn't mean strength when we were talking about her being a, a weaker vessel because why would I call somebody to help me that's weaker than me? 
If I need to go move like this podium, if I need to put this podium up here every Sunday, why am I going to call somebody up here to help me that's weaker? That makes sense. Why would God give me a mission and then give me a helper who can't help? When the Bible says weaker vessel, what he means is fragile. Fragile, precious, rare. He's speaking weaker and this is how you handle her. You handle her with care because she is a precious diamond and if she's not feeble, she's rare. And so you, oh, let me not talk. I was about to jump in the side chicks. We're not going to talk about that today. But, 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 but you would get caught up looking at the side because you upset because the wife is trying to help. Jesus, help me to preach your word. So you got to understand that we're talking about alignment. Now, the trick of the enemy as it relates to relationships is to, his strategy is to distract the woman and discourage the man. He distracts the woman and he discourages the man. And distractions are designed for you to expend energy in places not deemed important. So that when it times it, when it when it gets time to get into the stuff that really matters, you're depleted. You have no more fight. You can't help because you're exhausted because you've been distracted fighting over stuff that don't even matter. He wants to distract the woman and discourage the man. And the discouragement is designed to make the man shut up. A quiet man is a dangerous thing. When I was in college, and these two, and you see people getting ready to get into a fight, and one man would be, I'm going to do this, and I would blah, 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 he, and he's talking all this big talk. But that joker that walked out and didn't say nothing, you better watch him, because he got something. The, I, I tell him all the time, if that joker walking around, he quiet, duck. Duck or run. Because he has something that's keeping him calm. <laughs> he has something that's, that's that I, I, when you know what you have, there is no reason to get all Kicking up a fuss and fighting and, 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 and cussing and, and all this other stuff that we get to do when we become the angry woman. Look, the book of Proverbs said it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with an angry woman in a wide house. He says, he goes on in Proverbs 25, 24, just if you want to show this to our husbands. He says, look, in Proverbs, he said, it's better to live on the corner of the rooftop. <laughs> he says, it's better to expose yourself to everything else in the world that's going on than that angry woman. Hmm. I'll read exactly to you. It says, it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Because no matter how big the house is, if she is ready, you can't run from her. If she is angry and she done got good and distracted, <laughs> she done got good and distracted, she ready to wear your hind out. And the Bible says, brother, it's better to get not on the roof, in the corner of the roof, on the edge. He said, get on the edge. And then she'll be out there hollering about, jump. 
Jump if you're bad. Jump head first. Mama, don't laugh. Now you laugh too hard, mama. Now you laugh too hard. Now you now, now, now that's my dad. Now that is my daddy now. So you come on. Now, now, y'all cut that out now. now. She like, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No, no, dad, daddy, stay in the room. Don't get on the rooftop. It's all right. Look. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Look. Look. So, so, so he says, but, but because the issue is, if the man goes in that house, he will be quiet. Because generally what happens to the man when he gets attacked by the thing that he loves, he shuts down. He will shut down and he'll move. And, and that's why, that's why, and the thing about a man, a man can buy you gifts, bring you food, and even sleep with you, but be gone. He checked out. A man can be gone and still be in the house. He can be gone. What's that song? Your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Because a quiet man is a dangerous man. Why? Because the Bible says the power is in his tongue. The power is in his tongue. So you're walking around in feeble, divided houses because your man has shut up. You have beat him quiet. You have beat him. Ephesians 5 talks about the man being able to cleanse his wife with his words. But now he won't talk. Because soon as he halfway say the wrong thing, you ready to fight. So guess what? I just drive around the corner. I just call and see what everybody else got going on. Because the last thing I want to do is to go in the house with an angry woman. Jesus told them in the Bible, I think it's Luke, he says, speak peace in the house. He was talking to the preachers. He said, speak peace in the house, and you go in the house, and if, and if there's nobody there to receive your peace, turn around and leave. Okay, I know you think I'm lying, right? Let me, I'm going to show it to you. He talks about peace being in the house. Wives, you got to create a house of peace because the devil will continue to send distractions your way. You will continue to argue about crazy stuff. Yeah, it's going to be another pair of drawers on the floor. Yes, he's going to walk over it three times. That's just what he... It's not... Don't tear the house up. And then you will be talking to your single friends and she going to say, I wouldn't take that if I was you. I wouldn't take that. And let me tell you this. While she fussing about you picking up your husband's underwear, she picking up his underwear when he at her house. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. So you have to line yourself up with the mission. And submitting means I'm lining up with the mission. So I'm not going to get distracted, get angry, and fight over anything that ain't lined up with the mission. If it ain't in the mission, it ain't a big, it ain't a big deal. If it ain't a part of where we're going, it's not a big deal. I'm going to say, you need to walk around the house and say, Lord, give my husband the anointing to pick his underwear up off the floor and let God deal with it. You deal with him when it's lining up with the mission. Because the last thing you want in your house is a quiet man. So much power in what comes out. 
so much power in what he can say, so much power in what he, like I said, the Bible says that he, he will present her clean by his words and then present, him, present her back to him faultless. Hmm. So submitting. So we talked about that last week and we got through with that. And we'll release that video later. Um, but the deal is, lastly, about that when, when you understand to line up with the mission, then you go to what Bishop talked about. Then now, as the wife, you're taking pride in becoming the kingmaker. Because regardless of what you think about this dummy, there's a king in him. Regardless of what you think about what you call this fool, there's a king in him. Regardless of what you think about this idiot, there's a king in him. There's a king in him. And it's your job, say you choose to, to, to accept it, is to make the king. Don't assassinate. There are many men walking around, especially, I, I hate to speak personally, there are many black men walking around and they are assassinated kings. I started to call this message the walking dead. He's there, but he's dead. Assassinated kings. And you out here talking about, oh, I'm a queen, and I'm queen this and queen that. You ain't no queen. You ain't got no king. He's dead. At best, you a peasant. Oh, Lord, I feel my inbox popping up. Lord, I'm, if I'm not here next Sunday, y'all, just, just pray for me. Assassinating the kings when you are called to be a kingmaker as you line up under submission, as you lined up under the mission, you're making kings. And so you take pride, you take pride in, in being the kingmaker. Shouldn't nobody be able to jump on your husband if you're in the room? They, they shouldn't be able to say nothing about them without you talking about their mama. They shouldn't be able to get away with it. Because that's your king. That's, and, and I can prove it to you. That's why the Bible says that God is the king of what? Lord, have mercy. I'm going to have to just talk about these children next week because I... I <laughs> Because I'm just, I'm just, God just had me sitting here because I'm trying to stop us from dividing our house. It's a whole bunch of assassinated kings and divided houses. Die vision. Die to vision. Let's see, it's two sites going on in the house. And we can't move forward because the Bible says, why do we keep on falling down? Why does it keep on going? Why, why every time we go up, we go down? Why can't we reach a point of stability? Because the Bible says clear, a divided house, what? It shall not stand. A divided house can't stand. It will fall. When Jesus was casting out devils, when Jesus was casting out devils, they said he casting them out by, 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 by the spirit of the devil. He said, no, that ain't going to fight itself. This ain't no Beelzebub. He said the devil is smarter than the church folks. He said they're not going to fight each other. We will. He said the devil is smarter than us in our own house. That's why the marriage rate, the divorce rate in the, house, in, in, in the church house is the same as the, as the world. So it's over 50% because, because we just as ignorant as everybody else. Men walking around without a mission, without a vision, don't know what they're doing, and women just shooting them in the back of the head. And then got nerves to get do, do it two and three times, killing every single one of them. Because I refuse to line up. Men, I refuse to get a vision, and women, I refuse to line up under the mission. I speak peace. I speak peace in your home today. And peace, peace is not there won't be a problem. 
I need to make you understand that because sometimes we, us, us, us women, we want to address it because we want to keep the peace. That's not keeping the peace. Peace is walking through the storm knowing that God is with me, knowing that I'm talking about what was a part of the mission. So, no, we can't do that, baby, because that ain't what we're here to do. That ain't a part of the mission. Look, we need to address this. Let's sit down and talk about it. That's peace. The other deal is ignoring and enabling. So let me give me a newsflash, newsflash. You made that fool. Men plant in women and women give back what they planted. So we produce, we, 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 we plant and you produce. But on the flip side, you take it and make it what it needs to be. So now you made this fool, even though he planted. So if you need a new husband, he's in the one you got. You just need to change what you're making. <laughs> if you need a new wife. She's in the one you got. You just got to change what you're planning. You got to change what you're putting in her. The reason why she's walking around insecure is because you, uh, you're making fat jokes. And you probably did it 10 years ago. And she done watered that thing for 10 years. And tell me, I don't know why my wife always complaining about her way. You did it. You planted it, she nurtured it, she watered it, and she gave the increase. <laughs> and she gives it back to you, and you don't know where it came from. Why? Because it came back bigger than what you did, what, what you gave it. But it and that's and the reason why, because it was a seed. It's the same way we make the children. You plant a small seed and she nurtured it for nine months, and she brings it back to you bigger than you gave it to her. That same attitude, that same issue, that same problem, you planted it, brother. So, and I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I've learned. I'm telling you what I've lived. So what we have to do, men, is cultivate the ground. We got to dig up all the weeds and dig up all the crap and dig up all the stuff. Ooh, I'm going to get in trouble. Dig up all the stuff that other men planted. And women, we have to change what we're making. It's our job to make it. Uh. And so and you get caught up because you make all this money because you may even be the breadwinner in your house. And, and so he ain't bringing home the bacon because you bringing home the whole pig. But the fact that you bring it home the whole pig is still a part of a mission. You just got to understand what the mission is. There's a reason why you're doing that and he's doing this. Society has made you think about it's the, the, the one that, wear, the one that bring home the, 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 the more money, uh, uh, wear the pants. That's not true. God says, and if it wasn't scripture, I wouldn't say it. The God says, he that pisseth against the wall. You got to understand, we got to get this thing right. We got to get this thing in alignment. And if we can get in alignment, then we can be the example that the world needs to see to bring these families back together. If we can bring the family back together, we can bring the church back together. We can bring the church back together. We can bring the city back together. We can bring the city back together. We can bring the state back together, the nation, and then the world. But it starts in the, in the house. It starts in the house. Everything starts with the seed. And the seed of change is in your house. I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to walk away from it. But I want to, like I said, I want to speak peace. And I always, I, you know, three weeks ago I told the men, to, 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 I asked the women to forgive the men for not agape them correctly. Men, I want to challenge you to forgive that woman for not 
submitting correctly. Now she understands what it is. Now she may come to you with questions and she may want to understand what the send is and what the mission and what are we doing and you just got to have those answers and maybe y'all have to go back to God and figure it out. Maybe your mission is to get him saved. Maybe your mission is because when you married him he was out of the presence of God. And maybe that mission is to lead him to Christ. Whatever. And God says in, in 1 Peter you can lead him to Christ by how you act. One reason why he ain't saved, because you save and acting a fool. He don't see the benefit. He says you can change it by your lifestyle. You can change it by your conversation. You can change him how you, by how you walk and talk. You can save that man. through. He, you can be the, the example he needs to see that brings him to Christ. But you got to understand that he's yours. I speak peace in your house right now, and you just have to receive it. I speak peace in God, peace with God, which is the first and foremost thing. You got to have peace with God. What does that mean? That means you have to give your soul to him, give your life to him. You got to say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Master, save me. That's the peace with God. You got to have peace with God. And then peace in God, meaning I can walk through anything knowing that he's with me. I can walk through anything. I can go through anything. I can go through any problem. I can go through any trial. I can go through any situation because I know that he's with me. And then finally, you have the peace of God. And the Bible says, what is the peace of God? It's the peace that what? Surpasses all understanding. And the Greek word for all is all. That means I can go through anything and I ain't tripping and don't nobody understand why I'm tripping because everybody else around me is tripping and I'm just walking because I got the peace of God. And some people some might be asking you, why you ain't tripping? I don't even know why because it's surpassing my understanding too. I don't even know why I would normally freak out, but I'm just not because I, I got this peace about my life. I got a peace about tomorrow. I got a peace about who's holding my hand. And so, therefore, I can just, yay, though I walk through the valley, I know he's with me. And I love it because if he's with me on the mountaintop, he's with me in the He's the God of my high place and the God of my low place. And he's with me on the low place so I can appreciate the highs. <laughs> Let's look to God. God, thank you just for allowing us to be in your presence. God, thank you for allowing us to pour our hearts out to you, God. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for giving us direction, God. Thank you for speaking with clarity, God. We thank you. We love you. We need you in this place, God. Permeate this place. Permeate our homes, God. Help us to be the example, whether we're the husband, the wife. God, whether we have the spirit of husband or the spirit of wifehood, God, help us build us, cultivate us, and make us ready for the mission. Allow our homes, our houses, our cars to be better than they were when we left them, God. God, we need your spirit. We need your direction. We need your guidance. Speak to us throughout the week, God. Speak to the men. Show us how to be better men. Speak to the women. Show us how to be better women, God. Show us how to prepare ourselves for what you call us to be, God. Help us to stand for something. Bind the families back together, God. Help us to get understanding. Help us to get truth, God. And help us ultimately, lastly, God, to get peace. We give your name glory and honor and praise, God. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Wow. God always shows up here. Look, we want you to show up here, either in person or online, every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Uh, look, we, we ask you to take a moment to like and share this post with your friends and your family. And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Till we meet again.